Welcome to Smashing Connections, an opportunity to learn more about people, perhaps a colleague, a career, a culture, some poisons, and some smashing hangouts, which is geared towards improving your career's insights, organizational learning, personal development, social health. On career's insights, you get to hear from someone in their actual jobs and field. On organizational learning, break the silos, get some insights into what others do, their relevance to the organization, and their contribution to the world. On personal development, improve your emotional and cultural intelligence by learning about other world cultures. Why is this important? Data has it that emotional intelligence EQ and cultural intelligence EQ play a pivotal role in both career success and overall life satisfaction. People who are emotionally aware relate better, are better leaders, and earn more significantly than their non-aware colleagues. If you'd like to hear more about that, check the video in the description. On improving your social health, get some ideas about some smashing hangouts, places to go for pleasure and what others and you can do for leisure. Now Jam, let's dig in. Today we'll explore Romania with... It's actually, well, it's Diana. We oh, pronounce Diana. it I. Okay. With them, so, like I said, like I said, this trend ones which were working in contracts for companies like Renault, we took the opportunity of looking abroad for other career opportunities. Like I said after two weeks, I got a job with NGR. Mm. I was like, oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> so I moved to uh, this country on the first of January, 2015. Been working for for Jira since since then. So my first role was in monitoring base engines, where I was doing like calibration, working like physically on on the vehicles or on the laptop as well, working with um dashboards and, uh, i was validating all sorts of like uh, signals which to diagnose like the engine's health having a look at uh, all sorts of uh, recordings of the engine's activity which have been done on test beds on all sorts of even countries like hot and cold climate as well for three years and a few months and then i've jumped into purchasing mm. three years and then my team got transferred to supply chain and i was on maternity leave I came back uh, on, on, on July last year and what I'm doing at the moment is a role called the data governance specialist. Okay, but data governance is, is not just about data quality, it's about um, ownership, it's about uh, get, getting the right standards in, the, the business having the same um, standards throughout the business, the same let's say, uh, the data culture uh, throughout each and every department. So yeah, there's, there's lots, of, lots of things to do and it's quite a, let's say, a new concept within the business. So how things progressed, I have yeah. been working in similar leadership uh, roles, but those were in um, supply chain planning. I've been uh, working mostly with a tool called Tableau, which is a visualization tool. Yes. I've been in analytical, analytical uh, roles. I've been process lead, doing a bit of SQL. I'm not very experienced on SQL, even though when I was back in you know high school, that was kind of my main activity because I was studying like uh, maths and informatics, and my previous roles didn't involve that much coding. But I do have like a let's say a very standard experience. <laughs> I'm not an you know, uh, intermediate or an advanced coding guru. Just before coming back into maternity, I've seen this role uh, and it kind of matched with my aspirations. I love to work with people, get to, you know, not just do my work on the laptop. I, I want to see people physically, yeah. uh, talk to them face to face. So and that's kind of my, let's say, cup of tea for uh, social as well. So I'm not just, you know, uh -huh. doing What of you? How has been your career journey so far? Care to share in the comments below? The first day that I was in Coventry, hearing all sorts of your ballads and, and all sorts of other languages around myself, I was like, I felt a bit overwhelmed. Because um, what happens even back home in, in Bukhara, I, I could barely, you know, understand people because <laughs> of the accents. <laughs> the struggle for like one or two days. Um, and probably I had my, you know, ears clogged because of the flight. So that didn't help. And it was winter as well, so you can imagine. What about you? What was it like when you first interacted in another language apart from your mother tongue? Do share that by commenting below. I've been uh, born in Romania, in a very small city with roughly around now 25,000 people. <laughs> it is a city for us, which is literally at the borders of Bulgaria. So we have the Danube, which, are, which literally separates our country to, from, from Bulgaria. Um, love garlic, loads of it. Um, we try to avoid having it before going to the office. <laughs> um, we're not into the spicy foods, but we like very seasoned meat. Okay. We also do like herbs, like with thyme, um, coriander, lots of pepper. Because we can, we don't do ginger. I, I love spicy foods. To be honest, I I can go for a for a curry, which goes like 
like an extreme heat, <laughs> like, wow. a, like a chilly one. So I'm a moderate spend kind of girl <laughs> at home. Well, we don't do spices as much. We like a sweet or a, a bit of spicy paprika. The thing is, I actually built up my spice level. And coming here, I kind of tried to build it up slowly. And as I said, like after a few months, I got the courage to try it. <laughs> so if you are learning something new, please give this video a thumbs up. Be kind. Share this knowledge with a friend or 10. They will thank you for it. What are the interesting places that you'd recommend mm. the foreigner who wants to come to your country? In the mountains, we have a, a place called the uh, Grand, where, where you have a massive castle, which used to be basically a tale. Half of it true, half of it is not true. He directly used to, to live in that castle, but he's not a vampire. He used to be a very famous uh, ruler, yeah. of which, in order to turn it, um, his enemies, people hate him, people like close to his uh, fortress, and people get scared and not go in and invade the castle. <laughs> um, because he was like thirsty of blood. This is why they said he was a vampire, but he wasn't a vampire. That's, that's, that's something very fictional. What of you? Which nice place or places would you recommend? We would like to know. Please share in the comment section and check out the Smashing Hangouts playlist in the description too. <laughs> How do you say good morning, hello, goodbye, thank you? Good morning is... That's short for Buna Diminatsa. Hello is Buna. Uh, uh, Why is the short version is A uh, okay. or La Revetere. Uh, thank you. Even, to mess, even though we do prefer saying Messi, like French. Oh, that looks like there's a lot of foreign influence in Romania. So which yeah. other languages can you speak? I can understand Italian quite well, Spanish. Uh, I can't speak that because, you know, I never had that much opportunity to speak to someone, you know, native. Uh, the French, yeah, French. I used to live in France for four months for a replacement so again it was easier for me to speak in french than it was in english especially to be understood by you <laughs> and if i don't know the words in french i'm going to reply in english i've been uh, exploring part of the, the country like normandy and uh, been to uh, like the south area which is uh, uh, monaco with uh, Khan and a lot of traveling but now with a 20 month old i wouldn't say i'm that flexible i don't travel with him especially like around the country and stuff he does love to, to fly as well he has been on his Worth trip so far in 20 months. Probably I don't you know, leave the country as often as I used to. I actually got to married legally last Saturday. Oh wow! Congratulations. <laughs> Finally, after almost eight years and a half. Wow! Did you meet him here? <laughs> yeah, and that was by coincidence because um, he's he's also Romanian. I've never met him in my you know, country. Um, we didn't have like mutual friends, and this is how we kind of got to know each other. Is there a Romanian community like where people could meet up? if they just came to the country at all? That might be. The thing is, because, as I said, there was that, like, this massive, let's say, boom of Romanians in terms of uh, career opportunities here in, in the UK. We actually kind of know each other from previous roles, yeah. you know, uh, from around the country, not just from, like, immediate teams. We were, you know, basically thousands of engineers or right. other, you know, uh, disciplines. Uh, it was just like, more finance, uh, HR even, yeah. We meet each and every, probably, few weeks, new people. Um, by having you know, all sorts of like gatherings, uh, just going out or just you know, even out in the box. We don't have like a very social event to gather around. We meet or depending on the occasions, like for wedding ceremony, a baptize, someone's birthday, um, and things like this. Is it like an organized group? Can strangers join in or is it formal? I mean, I actually know someone who's Romanian and she's a finance show person, but she hasn't found the job she wants, although she's overqualified and she's very yeah. smart. How would someone like that get in touch with people like you? Which I believe if she got in touch with you, she would be able to benefit because you have information for her and be able to guide her if possible. Yeah, it's all about, I think, also about the, I think the relationships because I know most of the people what they do for a living and uh, you know, she can reach out uh, to myself, uh, can give her some guidance around even what's, what's happening up here. Okay. In, even in the country, recommendations it doesn't have to be you know, even work related or it doesn't matter the okay. topic. I would direct. Uh, her to have a conversation, a chat, and if she needs help with anything, yeah. Well, that would be useful. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, yeah, no worries. No worries. Yeah. Do you have other pastimes? Um, I like gardening. I've never done gardening in my life before <laughs> I moved in my house, which was three years ago. I don't buy flowers. I, I do grow uh, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, plums, red currants, white currants. Poetry, I like painting, mm. yeah, and during COVID, I used to paint. Uh, I used to do even my own nails. I, I actually took them off for this morning. Uh, I did them for my for my wedding because I didn't want to pay 40, 50 quid uh, on a set of nails for that was good. a few either hours or other. You know, I'm a very hands on person, like, I, 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 I like to do DIY stuff, um, even around the house. 
invigorating. I, I even did my own wedding invitations. Mm -hmm. Easy way. When I say easy way, I've downloaded an app called Canva. Okay. Which it was free for the first, I don't know, one, two weeks. And then you can pay for like a monthly subscription, which I think is like 13 pounds. I started to design, you know, all sorts of bits. Um, and I, I actually, instead of printing them through the app, I've actually printed on my on my printer, so I did save a bit of money as well. <laughs> um, and some materials, um, I got a few bits and bobs from either Amazon or from like uh, the post office, you know, like envelopes and all sorts of like seals and stuff. So yeah, but I, I wanted to do them from, from scratch because again, to be honest, they were quite dear. The ones which I liked were like 10 pounds each. You know, like that's too much money though for a wedding invitation. It is if you um, met someone, like who was young, which subjects would you say they should concentrate on to get into your kind of field? Definitely anything in, involving STEM. So science, mathematics, computer, especially mm -hmm. computer stuff, computer programming, that would be the, the best. Okay. That's the future. It has always been the, the future. Uh, Sharing is caring. Care for others. Share this with someone or on your timeline. Let them learn from you. So are you into AI as well? Yes, not as much. My team, things are progressing around the area because I think it's still a vast domain to explore. Um, and it's quite new as well. I'm still all on the learning curve and I'm literally somewhere, <laughs> somewhere down, somewhere below. <laughs> How does AI impact your life and job? Positively, negatively, or both? Comment below and share with other concerned people. Which countries have you traveled to apart from France? Sweden, Norway, uh, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Germany, uh, Belgium, Greece, Turkey, uh, Hungary. Uh, so I used to keep counting them. I think there are like probably 17 countries. I yeah. haven't had the opportunity to travel more than like four or five hours by plane, as in I haven't been to Asia. Well, I would love to do that, but yeah, no, I haven't traveled that, that far, unfortunately. Uh, in some of the cases, I didn't go for like something which, let's say, a normal tourist would go for. Okay. And especially the restaurants, I usually go to local. Mm -hmm. I don't go like for the high end. Blah, blah, blah. How do you discover where the locals go? You speak to them or what? Um, yes, that's a starting point. So I tend not to go like in the heart of the city because that's very touristy. Yeah. Uh, I try and find a place and then I ask you know, about what do the locals usually you know eat or I do my homework a bit mm -hmm. before that. And then usually I get recommended all sorts of places. So do you have a bucket list of places you'd like to visit? I still want to finish the uh, northern part, like uh, the Scandinavian countries. I want to go to Lithuania. I've mentioned I haven't explored Asia at all. So yeah. It would be amazing. I have a massive bucket list. A massive. <laughs> Probably not enough time in this in this life, but uh, yeah, I'll try and take some of them off. Would you share your bucket list of things you'd like to do before you leave this earth? You've been in the UK for some time. Yeah, do you yeah. have some favorite spot and recommendations for maybe other mom in Wales? The beaches, anywhere in um, Lake District, anywhere in the Cotswolds. I literally live uh, at the tip of Cotswolds, like the northern part of it. So that's where Cotswolds starts. I live uh, like south of Stratford upon Avon. Okay. And the very first village, which is amazing, I just called the uh, Broadway. Yeah. That, that Cotswolds Sea vibe, you know, yellowish and very traditional. And it literally looks like in the movies. Well, because in terms of food and drink, well, there are so many bloody places out there. Like, I, I can't pick a favorite. I tend to try all sorts of things around. Any culture, any dishes, any any drinks, any any anything. And I can't choose between. If people would ask me what's my favorite meal, I can't tell them because I will be like, I like this, that, 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 that. Oh, and also that. Let's start with the Romanian dishes. Oh, Romanian dishes! I love the soups, the sour soups, which can have either chicken, beef, pork. But one of my favorite dishes, the ones which are not that heavy, because what happens during the like the winter time, we do tend to go very heavy on the meat. <laughs> and uh, all that sour cream and uh, you know all that let's say I'm saying it's good stuff because it's tasty but not as you know healthy yeah. quite an appetite for, for food in general <laughs> <laughs> especially you know home cooked ones so as I said in general anything that has to do with spices I love yes please which tourist attraction or attractions would you recommend please share that in the comment below so do you have any favorite films I do prefer comedies to be honest okay I like uh, like silly things like the Guardians of the Galaxy um, when I say it's silly it's because um, I would see that being a favorite movie of someone younger than me even though i tend not to generalize things but uh, yeah, that's kind of my, my cup of tea <laughs> i haven't read a, a, a book in probably four years now even like traditional ones for, from our, our country i used to read them when i was younger and i couldn't understand them as well as i would i would now but again it's trying to find the, the time for, for it have you got a favorite book movie or tv show do drop that in the comment what has helped you most to move 
forward in your career to, to progress? Staying, you know, uh, positive and being open to t- challenges in general and also having someone by your side like my, uh, my, my husband. Now, like, it's all about, you know, having people around you and accepting any challenges. It, it can be, you know, difficult. So you want to, if you're curious enough and understand, just push yourself to the limit. Mm. So it's basically, in, you've done it yourself, you'd say, with some help from your family, I would say, but yeah, it's yeah. been that you've been self-driven. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, if, I, if you can summarize it that way, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well done. So do you have resources, videos, communities of practice or networking groups for work? I can definitely recommend the group that you are also involved in. <laughs> <with Nashiket. Okay. laughs> definitely, that's a very good uh, starting point. I... Did Nashika tell you how we actually did this? Well, I say we. It, it's basically most most himself <laughs> driving it. Mm-hmm. Um, so he has started off by creating a presentation somewhere in August last year about India. Okay. As a digital souvenir to summarize, uh, so difficult to summarize your whole culture. Absolutely. It's difficult, bloody difficult. Um, so I did find that that initiative quite uh, interesting. So I did approach him. And I was like, oh, I can do a Romanian one as well. And um, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, we started then, you know, keeping the, the ball rolling with asking other colleagues and, and to be honest, I'm going to tell 100% Nashiket did uh, try and reach out to as many people as he could to get more, you know, cultures in and uh, individuals within GLR uh, to promote each and every culture. And I think he did a, an amazing job because as you can see, probably you are at Tia country already yeah. in uh, 20 something lined up up mm. till October, November time. Mm. Keep the, the momentum flowing uh, each and every week. And uh, we basically have a presentation of showing who's going to come up next. And I, I tend to socialize it via the you know, Yama group. Okay. Uh, every time I have the opportunity to do so, mm. so that I can encourage others to, um, you know, to learn from our you know, cultures and also to share some of their uh, even learnings, but also their, you know, uh, uh, cultures to the wider public, to the general wider public. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Romania is a captivating country with a rich history, stunning landscapes, and fascinating cultural contributions. Let's dive into interesting and delightful facts about Romania. 1. Romania boasts, the bigger cascade falls in Severin, which is the most beautiful waterfall in the world. Its unique beauty and mesmerizing water flow have earned it this prestigious title. This natural wonder was truly unique. Unfortunately, Rome Silver, the Romanian conservation company, announced that part of the bigger waterfall fell under its own weight on Monday, the 7th of June, 2021, due to the travertine and moss that had increased over time. So the protruding part no longer exists, and this is what it looks like today. Two. Bucharest Mass Transit, Europe's fourth largest mass transit network. So, hop on a tram or subway to explore the city like a local. Three. Wine production. Romania ranks as the ninth largest wine producer globally. Its vineyards yield a variety of delicious wines, from aromatic whites to robust reds. 4. Coffee lovers, take note. The founder of Illy Calf, Francesco Illy, was born in Timisoara, Romania. He even invented the first automatic steam espresso coffee machine. 5. Timisoara became the first European city to have electric street lighting back in 1889. 6. The modern jet engine owes its existence to Henry Kowanda, a Romanian inventor, who created it in 1910. 7. The city of Brasov houses the largest Gothic church between Vienna, Austria, and Istanbul, Turkey. 8. Palace Castle, an enchanting castle that was the first in Europe to be entirely lit by electricity. Its central heating system, built in 1888, still warms its halls today. 9, 10, 11, 12. Hidden beneath the Bihor Mountains, Romania boasts Europe's second largest underground glacier, the Skerisoara Glacier, which has existed for over 3,500 years. One, Count Dracula, the archetypal vampire Count Dracula, created by Bram Stoker, was inspired by the real life Romanian Prince Vlad Tips, known for impaling his enemies along roads. The movie Cold Mountain was filmed on location in Romania. Romanian scientist Nikolai Pilescu discovered insulin, originally calling it pancreas. Although Canadian scientists received the Nobel Prize for insulin research, Pilescu's pioneering work was significant. 13. To famous novels drew inspiration from Romania, The Castle in the Carpathians by Jules Verne, Dracula by Bram Stoker, inspired by the legendary figure Vlad Tips, also known as Vlad the Impaler. Romania is home to Bran Castle, often associated with the legend of Count Dracula and Dracula's castle. While Vlad the Impaler, the inspiration for Dracula, did have connections to the castle, the fictional vampire character was based on the novel by Bram Stoker. 14. The Palace of Parliament located in Bucharest is the second largest administrative building in the world, after the Pentagon in the United States. It's an impressive feat of engineering, and one of Romania's most iconic landmarks. 15. Transylvania is an historical region in Romania famous for its stunning landscapes, medieval towns, and fortified churches. It's also known as the setting for many vampire stories, including
including Brimstoker's Dracula 16. Mary Cemetery Located in the village of Saponka, in Romania is a unique cemetery where each gravestone is adorned with colorful paintings and humorous epitaphs depicting the life and personality of the deceased. This colorful cemetery is known for its whimsical tombstones and vibrant folk art, is a celebration of life and a unique cultural attraction in Romania. 17. The Danube Delta in Romania is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is Europe's largest best preserved delta, home to diverse wildlife, including over 300 species of birds. It's a paradise for nature lovers and bird watchers. 18. Sarmoli is a traditional Romanian dish, consisting of cabbage leaves stuffed with a mixture of minced meat, rice, and spices, often served with sour cream and polenta. It's a staple of Romanian cuisine and a favorite during holidays and special occasions. 19. The Voronec Monastery, known as the Sistine Chapel of the East, is a 15th century monastery in northern Romania famous for its vibrant blue frescoes depicting biblical scenes. It's one of the painted monasteries of Bucovina, a UNESCO World Heritage Site 20. Palace Castle, nestled in the Carpathian Mountains, is a stunning example of Neo-Renaissance architecture and one of Romania's most beautiful castles. It's known for its intricate design, luxurious interiors, and picturesque surroundings. 21. Legend of the Dacian Draco. The Dacian Draco was a military standard used by the ancient Dacians, an Indo-European people who inhabited the territory of present-day Romania. Shaped like a dragon with a wolf's head, the Draco was believed to instill fear in the enemy and protect the warriors in battle. These facts offer just a glimpse into the rich history, diverse culture, and natural beauty of Romania, making it a fascinating destination for travelers seeking adventure and discovery. So pack your bags and immerse yourself in Romania's landscapes, historical treasures. Experience affordable travel in the warmth of Romanian hospitality, while savoring traditional dishes like meaty grilled minced meat rolls and discovering Dracula's legacy. Now Jim, in summary, cultural learning isn't just about facts, it's about emotional growth, empathy, and interconnectedness. As we explore other cultures, we become more emotionally intelligent global citizens. Discover people, careers, and culture in our Smashing Connections playlist. Also search for some smashing walks, foods, and hangouts on my other channel at Todigimental next time. Remember, cultural intelligence isn't about memorizing facts, it's about curiosity, openness, and continuous learning. So, embark on this enlightening journey, embrace cultural diversity, and let your intelligence bridge the gaps between hearts and minds. Just before you leave... Here are some famous Romanian icon footballers like... Gheorghe Hegi, known as one of the best players in the world during the 1980s and 90s and the greatest Romanian footballer of all time, Dorin El Muntinu, holds the record for the most caps for the Romanian national team, Adrian Muciu, a prolific forward who had a successful career in several top European leagues, Romanian Hollywood stars, Sebastian Stan, born in Constanza, Romania, he is known for his role as Bucky Barnes, winter soldier in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Romania is home to great musicians like George Enescu, a renowned composer, violinist, pianist, conductor, and teacher, Sergiu Celibadac, a Romanian composer, conductor, musical theorist, and educator, Ina, a popular contemporary musician known for her house, dance music. Did you also know that... Romania once had a monarchy that no longer exists. Thanks for watching.